now, yes, now we are being recorded. Okay, so I'll call this meeting to order at 6.03. Um, I will find a pen that works. Um, so our first order of business is to um, approve the minutes of uh, March 16th, which as I was reading, seemed like an eternity ago. Um, yeah. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So did everybody get a chance to read it? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Scott? That. Okay. Um, okay. So I'm going to assume that since nobody said anything, um, let's see. Everybody's sitting at a computer, right? Should we just... Just vote by chat. Yeah, you can. Because um, that's recorded as part of the meeting. <coughs> yeah, I think oh, that's I think. right. So first, I need a motion, though. Uh, I'll move. Diane's on the line, right, Diane? I'll move that we approve the minutes for March sixteenth. Okay. So moves. Is there a second? Second. Colleen, seconds. Colleen second. Um. Okay, is there any discussion? No, I don't hear any. Okay, um, well, we'll just go with a, everybody take yourself off mute and we'll just go with an aye and a nay and hopefully nobody says nay. Okay, so all of those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, I think we got it. <coughs> Um, I don't believe I saw any public on the line. No. Okay. No, I don't see anybody. Um, okay. And then, um, go with, moving on to the agenda. Um, we need to add, so we're going to replace item B. Uh, so resignation will move to item B and then item C will be a budget statewide budget discussion. Okay. Um, does that sound good? So um, and I'll talk about item, well, okay, we'll leave item B, but it's gonna change topics. It's gonna be treasurer position. So we'll get rid of the resignation and discussion. Okay, and then we'll move on to the resignations and then the budget. Um, okay, so the first one would be COVID-19. And I think I will turn that over to Christine, David, Craig. Yeah, I think it might. Hold on. Am I on mute? Am I on mute? No, I'm not on mute. No. Yeah. So, so I think because uh, Craig's had a, a long day and uh, it was heartwarming to watch all of that come together finally this morning. I mean, that's been one of our biggest, other than the instructional piece and the all the stuff that goes along with trying to figure that all out during this COVID period. And believe me, that's a work in progress. And we'll talk about that and Christine can talk about that. But the other biggest task we've been trying to complete is serving somewhere between 700 and 800 meals a day. And uh, so I I did, uh, I did um, just wanted to say that, yeah, I mean, Craig's just done an incredible job. So Craig, do you wanna talk a little bit about while you're on the line and then you can, you don't have to stick around, but how uh, how things went this morning? Yeah, so I, I, I just was saying everything went really well. I mean, we brought in all the food on Thursday or Friday, um, produced a bunch of food on Friday. So we felt, you know, going in today, to today, we were feeling very confident that we were going to have the operation up and running out of Windsor very smoothly. And, um, Things were good, and to, and like I said, the morning was good. Everybody showed up. We had a lot of volunteers, a lot of people there. Um, probably too many, honestly. Um, with Jimmy's crew, Jim's crew was there at seven thirty. Uh, there were like six of the oh, five of those folks, and then um, Wendy's people came in, and. Uh, another five, I think, five at least. So we were kind of tight in there, um, but 
Heather from Weathersfield sort of is leading the pack and organizing and Rodney's in the kitchen producing food, doing the production, Emily and Grady um, is our crew. And um, so we were doing, things were going good until about 9.15. And when I was aware, uh, made aware that we were 145 lunches short. Um, so thank good God that we had had all the ingredients. We had to slice some turkey, but we had all the ingredients. We busted out another 145 meals in about 25 minutes. Wow. And uh, no, bu no buses were waiting. So everything was, was good. And then, you know, then we started. My bus was actually a little early. To, my bus was actually a little early today, Craig. Yeah. yeah. I was like, I was expecting a delay. It's amazing. Good. Um, so, you know, we got right into production and uh, for tomorrow. And we're looking good tomorrow. We did double counted. <laughs> we, came, we all came together after all the meals were put out. And we, you know, Heather is very particular. And um, he didn't like a few things. So we came together and worked together to get the things straightened out and uh, came up with a, a procedure that seems to be work, seemed to work pretty well. So uh, tomorrow's spaghetti or penne pasta with meatballs and marinara and green beans, bagel and fruit, canned fruit. Um, we're going to be tight on containers. I bet I'll be honest. I was a little conservative on the container purchasing just because I'm trying to be kind of conservative. Um, but when you're doing, so we did, we put the bagel, we wanted to use up some of the canned fruit that was left over from Windsor and other, you know, and then we brought all the inventory from Heartland and Weathersfield from like canned fruit and things that we can use from the commodities to Windsor on Thursday. So we had a fair amount of canned fruits. So we used the two compartment containers for the bagel and fruit. So we didn't have to put fruit in a small portion cup. So we did 1400, we only have one um, sealer right now because we didn't get the mold for the other one. So we're only using one sealer. So we did 1,400 meals today out of one sealer, and that took a while. Um, we got done production about 3 o'clock, but we're getting the next, the other mode um, old tomorrow for the other machine. So we should be more efficient. So, I mean, all in all, things went good. The, pores, the product looked good. Um, the team worked well together. So, I mean, I think by the end of the week, we'll be good. But it's just put the space and the walk-ins kind of tight because we got to think about now it's about logistics, right? It's about how many containers can we fit in the walk-in? How many sheet pans do we have? Um, all of those things that we kind of didn't think about with that much production. So we're good. <laughs> Craig, we good? How, many, how many meals total did you serve? I don't know if I missed that. Today we three? served uh, 685. Wow. That's impressive. Breakfast and, it, and lunches. So 685 times two. Yeah. And um, Windsor was there. The population served there about the same. Like, are we expecting that to increase now that the food quality is going to oh, increase? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I, I think we will see the food. We had so they asked us for ten more meals today. So okay. that's that's an increase after the first day. Uh, Albert Bridge mm -hmm. asked for five more. Um, so I think once by next week, I think we'll see an increase. It, it's going to take a week probably. Yeah. Um, so. But that's great. And hopefully yeah. word of mouth will get out. Yeah. So, I mean, 
the the thing that I don't love, we're putting everything in a plastic bag. That and this is the thing that we got to really think about, and it's not going to change overnight. But we're putting all like breakfast and lunch and milk and juice and fruit in a plastic like grocery bag, right? Handled grocery bag. I don't really love that that um delivery it's efficient because we can put the meal in and it's one bag and we see five kids at the bus or whatever five you know at the bus stop we need five we can just pick up five and and place it in the cooler or in there on the ground or whatever but it's plastic bags are it's creating a lot of waste we have a ton of waste right now so we just i just i'm up my i got my finger on the pulse with that and we got to figure out what we're gonna do yes Brittany. would um paper bags work better yeah so i have a call in with swish white river and he's gonna give us a quote he's seeing what he can find for a smaller grocery style bag with a handle that looks nice uh but papers honestly is more expensive but yeah, I know we'll Albert did right paper at first, um, and that it seemed to work well. I mean, it was we could get rid of it right away. We knew it was recyclable, or we burned it, you know, like yep. in a fire pit or whatever. Um, it seemed to work okay. The only issue with it was um, if if they're leaving it on the ground for whatever reason, right? Like at our house, it's you know yep. um, it got wet, and that was a problem. Or even in a cooler, if the cooler was wet on the inside, then it you know, Chase would be running the house and it'd fall all over the yard. But yeah. um, at least it wasn't, it was something that you could easily get rid of and feel okay about, you know? Right. Yeah, so, I mean, Weathersfield had a bunch of people, you know, they had a bunch of um, donations. So we're utilizing what we have currently and we have enough probably for the week. Um, so now then we're gonna work on what what a better plan is. I mean, I thought, if we could put the things on the bus, it's all production though, that's the problem. If we put crates of milk and crates of juice and apples and meals on the bus, then the people on the bus are gonna have to physically find, okay, I got three, so one milk, one juice, one meal, one breakfast, and do it on the bus rather than in the building. So, I mean, it's, there's no perfect scenario, I don't think. I just, I just want to be concerned about the waste and environmentally, you know, we need to be representing well. Um, like I said, a plastic bag is not the end of the world, but it's not great, so. Craig, I'll admit that I saw the plastic bag today and I was like, oh, bummer, they went to plastic. But then my next immediate thought was, you know what, we're, we're feeding kids and it doesn't matter. Um, yeah. and I, as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, they're individually packaged. Like it's, it was immediately clear to me why you guys went that way. And I know yeah. you're a perfectionist and I know that you want it to be completely right, but I, I'm kind of in a mode that this whole situation is completely wrong and we're doing yeah. a bang up job. And so I don't want, you to feel pressure from us like on a normal day i'd be like no don't do it in plastic but right now yeah. i think it's a bit of a survival mode and so don't don't okay. beat yourself up too much <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it, it also was so much faster at the bus stop itself like and it just made that interaction like quicker you know yeah. and so i think it's i think it's also just it was a safer thing so yeah i would love to see paper that would be great um but i totally understand um why you know that makes a lot of sense yeah but the yeah. other thing is it's sort of it's kind of messy <laughs> that's the, that's the yeah. other piece of it that's not tight and tidy and it just doesn't represent well and i think yeah the bags are all over the place you mean like yeah just, and who knows what it's looking like when you get it there it's probably upside down <laughs> yeah and i don't like i said i don't like that <laughs> yeah it is a fun, it's a little thing, but it's it's the details that matter, right? And I think as we continue to build this, 
we have to continue to look at the details and fix and try to fix it the best we can. Right, because you're going to be doing it in the summer going forward anyway. This isn't right. something, it's not a production thing that goes away for you. It's not going but away, I, right. I do agree with um, with Nicole and that it, this we're doing the best we can right now, that it's fine, yeah. but that I totally get wanting to do it different. What about a box, yeah. like a carton? Yeah, yeah, and that, and they do have nice cartons, but I don't know if we can fit both the lunch and breakfast and milk and juice. It's too much of a box. But it's another, it's a good suggestion. I don't know. Yeah. What, what, Craig, what are those, uh, do those cartons look like the old, uh, I'm dating myself here, but the old drive-in cartons, you know, when you went to the drive-in, you, you, it would all be packed into a, like a soda crate is that is that what, what you no, it's, well i don't know i mean yeah you are dating yourself a little bit david but um, <laughs> sort of like uh, all i can think of is you know like the roast like the fried chicken you get at mark uh yeah. Yeah. i think that's so what i was thinking it's was kind of like of that foldable container yeah yeah I, I, I see what you mean but yeah. that would add putting them together and it would add a cost the cost of that would be huge yeah. probably yeah. crazy yeah i'll tell you the truth what yeah. I, what i'm more what i'm more concerned about i i i was a bad boy today and i snuck out uh and drove down because i really wanted to see this first day in action and in a lot of ways I'm, you know i'm glad that i did um be, because it was a first of all it was just heartwarming to watch everybody kind of just coming together in one spot to feed kids i mean that's that's incredible um and it was really a well-oiled machine between between craig and uh, and jim and wendy i mean that that's a that's a, a definitely a, a a triad there that is unstoppable i mean you know because we had we had some resistance, you know, from one particular uh, district, uh, and um, and their bus drivers especially were a little bit feisty. But I saw Wendy meet them right there when they pulled up. I, I saw Jim and Wendy. Hey, good morning. How's everybody? You know, welcome to you know welcome to Windsor. And it was it was just kind of a very upbeat atmosphere. Um, and uh, and again, a precision machine. We told those bus drivers. You are not going to have to get off that bus. We will load the bus. And I watched them load those buses. And within 10 minutes, those buses were loaded and they were out of the lot going back to their schools to pick up the volunteers. So so that was incredible. But um, and I and I, I, I happened to be there, too. I called Craig just to thank him. And, you know, we they were probably halfway through the second round of buses, I guess. And I called Craig and Craig said, can't talk right now, Dave. Sorry, I'm 140 meals short. So, uh, so we had to hang up, and and that was the way it was. But it was good because I watched how responsive that that whole crew was in the middle of what could have been a big crisis, and uh, and they pulled it off. By the time that last wave of buses came in, Craig had done that the extra 140 meals. They were all bagged, and they were out on that sidewalk and ready to to load. So, I mean, it was it was an, an an incredible morning, and I'm glad I was there because it was uh, it was worth note. I know Jim took a few pictures, which was great. He did, you know, and um, but I think Craig, you and I can, you know, follow up a little bit on on that container. One of the things I'm more I'm more concerned about, and maybe you're not, Craig, but I think as the weather gets warmer and that stuff sits on that sidewalk uh, or, or wherever we put it, you know, I, I'm worried about yeah. that box container with those bags. And I don't know whether it wouldn't would be worth uh, buying some insulated bags that would keep things cold. We, have you thought about that? Yeah, we have. We've purchased. We have a fair amount of insulated bags, and we have purchased more insulated bags for the summer program. Okay. So I think that's another piece, John, our boy John from Heartland, the bus driver, John. Um, yeah, John. Yeah. Well, anyway, he was. It, I mean, he was, he's, he's always on our side and he, and that's the first thing he said when I saw, when I cleared his bus this afternoon was, 
Do you want me to bring down those insulated bags from Heartland to make sure that we can keep the milk cold? Nice. And I said, yeah, I'll let you know, John, when we need them. But, nice. Um, yeah. I mean, it was 44 degrees today, so right. it wasn't a big deal. Right. John Samuel is what's – John <laughs> Samuel, yeah. Yeah, John Samuel. He's a great guy. And uh, that's what I mean. Everybody's got everybody's back, which is yep. – which is absolutely incredible, and uh, and that's a real team spirit. Well, but yeah, I think you're going to get to that point. I think where you're going to need those. And plus, the other thing too is the insulated bag. At least you know it, it, that would help a little bit with that presentation, and maybe sturdying up those plastic bags a little bit if we stay yeah. with plastic. But um, yeah. but I mean it uh, it couldn't have run any more smoothly for day one. I I just I really tossed and turned all weekend. Just saying that, uh, oh my God, what have, what have we done? And you know, because I think everybody was saying that you just wh why why are we doing this? It's not going to work. It's you know we can't get the same quality out of that many lunches and breakfasts. And, and I always had the faith, David. I don't know. I've always uh, had the faith. I appreciate that. <laughs> I, I would wake up at three o'clock in the morning and just say, oh my God, I, what what have we done? Because I knew a lot of this rested. Because Craig and Jim and I kind of. You know, we kind of birthed this together, knowing that we had to get this done because we were under pressure from our insurance company to get it all in one place. We were under pressure from OSHA to get it all in one place. We were under pressure to some degree from child nutrition to get it all in one place. And all the single districts around us, like Hartford and Springfield, they already had Brattleboro, they had already centralized everything to one building. But I know the drama that goes into any mention of centralization, people just, for some reason, more so in one town than the other towns, but they just go, they just go nuts. And so we literally, for, for one solid week, I bet all I did was, was kind of fight that political battle. And I tried to keep the principals out of it. I tried to keep Craig and Jim out of it. And in the end, I think we turned a corner and I think we're okay with it, but I think it, it was, you know, in the end, it's really when it's the right thing to do, it's the right thing to do. And, and, and we had, it. we, but you know, people didn't know that we were getting pressure from a lot of different places, but Craig, I, I just can't say how thankful I am to you and Jim and Wendy and that whole crew, uh, because that was asking a lot to make that all happen, uh, in, a, in a different place for two of those buildings. And yeah. I think that's great. And I also think the team now, they're going to be used to working together. I said to Craig that one of the advantages of this might be, you know, somebody somebody goes down at Heartland, we can maybe take somebody from Weathersfield, and and they're not going to feel like I don't know that those people. I don't I don't know any of them. You know, uh, I I think it, I think it could end up being a a big asset for us in the end that we see the as we talk about all the time. We just see that that bigger picture, and we see that it, we're really one up a valley community, and we need to think that way but i appreciate yeah. all you did craig to make it work thank you david so i mean i'll say i'll 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 end with a couple things so when i was leaving me and heather and rodney were kind of just talking about tomorrow and rodney said what a wonderful team i mean this is a guy that just started last week monday um something brand new um been in the restaurant industry for a long time but not in school food service so just for him to see that the team is willing to work together, come together, and, and he is, you know, he was hired to be my assistant, and he's going to be have some influence at Windsor, at Heartland, at Weathersfield to be kind of, at the end of the day, you know, maybe a year or two down the road, but probably be the executive chef of Windsor Southeast Supervisory Union Food Program. So, I mean, he's seeing that they're getting to work together to create this bigger program to benefit everybody in the SU. So that's good. Um, he's got a long ways to go, but um, it's good. And the other thing is, so I got an email from Rosie Kruger this afternoon. Well, not Rosie, but um, Island, right? Island, her assistant. Um, so they continue to reach out and want Windsor to, well, there's a lot of opportunity to feed other pe adults um, 
in hotels right now. So I got an email this afternoon said there's three adults in the Windsor Hotel. I don't even know where that is, but can you feed them? And I said, absolutely, because we're going to say absolutely, even if we can't, we're going to figure out how we can. Um, but just just to think about it, they're, they're, we for reimbursement, three fifty for breakfast, five dollars for lunch, five dollars for dinner. They want us to provide three meals a day, two lunch and one breakfast. So that's good, Matt. I mean, that's a big. Yeah. If we can continue to do that and show that we're willing to provide for the the communities, and I think it goes all the way to Hartford and all the way to Springfield, Claremont. I mean, I think there's a lot of opportunity that we could really benefit our whole program on doing some extra meals right now. And I mean, it's all USDA money. Who knows how they're gonna pay for this bill, but all we gotta do is provide the numbers and they're gonna pay us somehow. So I just think that it's another big opportunity for us to show that when, you know, South Windsor Southeast Supervisory Union's in it to be part of the community and um, provide for our neighbors. So it's good. That's all I got. Yeah, and while, while, while we're embarrassing people too, I want to uh, I want to shout out to Beth, Roy, and Nikki <clears throat> Because I, I, I remember those days a year or two ago when we were sitting at those meetings with cafe services and with the food committees and, and everybody, and, uh, you know, just exhausted thinking that we were never going to, we just weren't going to get this off the dime and, and you know, and, and here we are. So I think, you know, persistence pays off and when you've got the right, you know, the right model, um, you know, it, it just... You know, it it just takes off. So I I think I think Heartland really took the leadership on all of this. You know, initially two or two and a half years ago, I had to be convinced that it was time to throw <clears throat> capital services out. You know, because I had committed a lot to them, and when they'd been with Windsor for twenty one years, so it was not an easy decision. Um, but I think when everybody worked together in that team format. Uh, I think it's just another example of how you know, the synergy just starts to happen. It starts to come together. I remember trying to convince the Heartland staff about the breakfast program and what that what that looked like. I mean, I had oh, to. Get you're them. bringing back the PTSD. I know. <laughs> I know. A lot of PTSD. I know. No, it's all. It's really all Nikki's fault because she originally put that. Oh yeah. Lot of school meals on the on the on the uh, agenda. Of a board meeting. Yeah. So it, it's all her fault. <clears throat> the original. And, and, and I and Nikki almost cost me my job. There's no question about it. <laughs> I, I, re <laughs> I, re I remember I remember that. But but you know what? You stayed with it, Nikki, and you you know, and we we just said, No, this is what we're gonna do. And we and we did it. And when you've got all those stars aligned, the board support, board chair support, and superintendent support, and it just kind of that's when it flows. And and I think it, it shows that, you know, when we decide something as a group and we got and we have that passion, then we, we can, there's no stopping us. And so I carry that into curriculum, instruction, programs, middle school, all those other things. I think we can, you know, the, the, the sky is the limit. That's my, that's my, and I'm not try, trying to be too dramatic, but I think it's just a good, a good symbol of what we can do. So I have a question. Uh, I have a question about this meals related, but perhaps maybe answered by either Craig or Christine or, or Brittany, but about the uh, high school students, Weathersfield, Heartland, West Windsor high school students are, haven't heard much about that, but how are we increasing or are we finding more of them? Yeah, I, I yeah, we are, we are, what? Feeding them, or are we intriguing them? <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm talking I think feeding. he's talking about feeding. Yeah, yeah. so I, this I, is I'm... a funny story. This is a little bit interesting. I talked to Anton about two weeks ago, and he kept on questioning me why the Weathersfield bus 
so there was a there's a there's an area i don't know if it's on route five or what but there was a windsor bus and a weathersfield bus kind of button up against each other on the town line and um all the kids were going over to the weathersfield bus route because of the qual because the quality of the meals that were serving out of weathersfield was much higher and much better um than windsor so we were taking like 20 meals a day away from windsor and serving them on the weathersfield bus route um so that and he kept on asking me if we he we could stop sending weathersfield bus and this was all in the time of david and jim we're you know in the transition period of getting rid of cafe services so i didn't say much i was like yeah i'll continue to talk to david about it but we're feeding a fair amount of high school kids um i mean our numbers are are strong i mean out of weathersfield we were doing about 200 again today 250 meals for the town of weathersfield like i told the weathersfield board the other day um i mean on an average we were serving 70 breakfast and 135 to 45 meals a day in weathersfield um so we're doubling both breakfast and you know tripling breakfast almost um and doubling lunches um just with this service so there is some high school kids there are some other scenarios but it's good weathers i mean heartland is still you know we're doing about 185 meals in weathersfield i mean in heartland um i'd like to see that number go up i don't know i mean we're averaging 200 when we're in seat in in session so I don't know if it's just we're not we're not unable to reach them. I, I'm not sure what that is, but well, we did um, put out, we did put out a um, survey. Nikki helped with it for to yeah. gather information on high school students. We were serving a fair amount before that survey survey went out um, because people had been reaching out through email, and then I email Craig and Kelly, and we put them on the list. Um, in the beginning, we were having to keep track of which students were. Um, taking the meals now we um, don't have to do that that anymore we qualify with Windsor for serving all kids for the su I think under the summer program um, regulations so we did get some takers on that survey which um, we added to the list and I've put it in the newsletter a couple of times so if there are other other methods you know of getting kids food um, or advertising it we're you know, open to whatever ideas anybody has, because we definitely, that's a goal. Yeah. yeah. Do you think some of the issue might be that families, um, if they're working and they're not in the home, they're worried about the food sitting out or not being able to go down to the bus stop at that time to go get it? Mm -hmm. like, that might be, a, yeah, that might be an issue. Yeah. yeah. There are a lot of people still working and why would they want their food sitting out all day when they can't go get it because their kids are at daycare or their kids are with grandparents or whatever, you know? Some of that, although we, we are working and people email about getting food at different places because their kids are in other, other homes and we've made, you know, mm -hmm. you know how to do yeah. that. Um, along like people have been great if they, you know, we had a family email, I had a family email yesterday saying, that they didn't need the meals this week for whatever reason. I don't know why. Um, but then, you know, would like them again the following week. So people are at least, you know, communicating their needs, which is great. Yeah, so that's great. Get at least. I would also say, I mean, just I think a, a, a way to phrase it in the newsletter, too, of like, give your parents, give yourself a break. Go get lunch. You know, kind of, it's like, because that's the way I view my, like, lunch break every day of, like, we okay. have one thing I don't have to do. <laughs> and so, you know, really kind of pushing it out of there. And it's not, and it's also like that feeling of like, well, these it's for people that are in need. Okay. You know, I don't think I'm in need enough. And it's that kind of feel. So just kind of playing it up of like, it doesn't matter. It's for everybody. Um, okay. And just kind of pushing it out there of like, give yourself a break, get some, you know, support, support this and, and uh, eat this delicious food. So I think that's, 
you know, I don't know, because I know, I don't, it seems, it's always like, oh, is it, am I, am I needy enough for this? And right. I'm sure you'll get more people uh, yeah. once the word gets out too, because like we were, D Jace was getting the meals from Albert Bridge and they were awful. Like he wouldn't even eat them. I thought about canceling too until we finally got one of the meals from Craig. And then it was like, now he's going to eat them all the time. And so it's worth it. But before I was like, this is just going to waste because the bread was stale and he wasn't going to eat it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I had a question. Is there an, an advantage for us to increase numbers? Mm. Yeah. Or what yeah. is the advantage if we increase the numbers? Well, the advantage of is the 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 reimbursement rate is higher in some okay. you know for meals. So right now it's 350 for a, a meal for lunch. Oh, that's what you were saying. Okay. In NSLP, it. there isn't I mean, NSLP it's only like 334 or something like that. So the 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 advantage the more we serve the more money we get the more money okay. and it and it helps the more you have to work with yeah yeah and, and craig with these these rates because these are higher rates than a normal lunch rate right and yep. so you're able to produce these meals that are below that rate right, right? Mm -hmm. yeah yep. so essentially that difference is what the school can pocket then what the package actually operate right. in the black yeah yeah yep. But with the packaging, <laughs> yeah. the packaging does cost more. I mean, that is definitely like, so those containers, those black oh, containers wow. today, you know, they're costing 35, they're like 32 cents a piece. So that's a lot. Yeah. Uh, they're yeah. ovenable, they're refrigerated, you know, they're cold or hot. You can put them in the oven. So, mm -hmm. I mean, every container out there, disposable, is expensive. I mean, it's pennies, you know, so I can get some for 29, some for 35, some for 32. I mean, but yeah, recyclables I, are expensive. No, I think it's worth it. And yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I also think the thing we've got to remember, you know, which is sort of not, you know, the people on this call, don't think about this very often, but I still say from the feedback I've gotten for a lot of parents, this might be the only real meal that they're going to have in a given day. And, you know, I think sometimes, you know, because of, you know, our situation, you know, and everybody's a little different on this call, but, but the truth is, you know, to, to know that we're giving those kids, a lot of those kids, a really solid meal. I think that's really the, the the heroic nature of what what we're doing. But I, I think Craig, you should let's keep thinking about that packaging. You know, you and I are pretty good about cooking up schemes. So if yep. you you know if you think you got some ideas, just 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 run them by me. And uh, I think in the end, you know, and we're going to get to this later on. But I think in the end, as that meal count continues to increase, I think this is also going to work out for us financially too because i i think it's i, I you know i'm not going to make any promises now because ed would would shoot me but i mean i think that that i think we're going to be okay in the end because i've seen these numbers increasing we were not serving you know 700 kids across this su you know back uh six weeks ago so scott you had your hand up again sorry okay uh, so the point i was going to make or try to make was that the uh I'm intrigued by the uh, numbers aspect of this, and I don't know if that's something that we have to um, vote on as a board or not, but you know, increasing numbers to try to get more reimbursement seems to be pretty straightforward. But if, in fact, we are uh, operating in a summer meals-like mechanism now, or if that's what it is, I just wanted to hear that clearly, A, and B, you know, because of the nature of this pandemic and and who is at home now. So we've got uh, high, uh, excuse me, college kids at home that may still be 18. We have high schoolers at home that are presumably 18. And there may even be cousins um, that are in Vermont right now or people that at second homes. And so as broad as we can, in my mind, as broad as we can uh, message this, places like the listserv as opposed to the uh, in-school district uh, email lists things like that that get that may scoop in a few more 
customers for Craig. That's yeah, it. good point. I did hit the listserv once. We can hit it again now that we're in the new swing. Yeah, that wouldn't hurt. That probably but wouldn't hurt. The last time we only got four responses out of the listserv. Yeah, I, was, I was thinking you could kind of do a regular every other week reminder, even if it's, yeah. you know. You can post you can post the menu for the week. Yeah. You know, yeah. just put the menu up on the listener. Yeah. That might yeah. Be fun. That's a good I idea. I think I'm happy to do it. I think Craig needs a good number. I'm just I I'm worried that if we put the list menu up that we might end up with fifty extra people and not enough food and and so I kind yeah, of I don't know that either. I don't know how to do that logistically. <clears throat> Nikki, that survey was, we needed more information. I, I can't remember what was missing, but something, either the kids' names or we had their address and the number of kids, but we didn't know yeah. who they were. So if we could, so if we could add that to that, um, okay. that would, that would be helpful. We Christine, that. Christine we, Linda has a list, right, of all the Heartland kids who go to other high schools, right? She, have you reached out to them specifically or no? Not specific, not not individually, no. Okay. But I just wonder, you know, Linda knows everybody, right? And Linda knows, where, I mean, a lot of them are at Hartford, I, I get. But I mean, I think we could grab that list and and yeah. maybe do, do some sort of a, you yeah. know, I'd be, yeah, I'd be glad to help you with that. I don't, you know, we could do okay. a, you know. No, we can figure that out. Well, we can talk about that. And, I, and I'll say the same thing to Jean, because I know she has reached out to some of those high school kids. With her, you know, it's either Springfield or Windsor. And quite frankly, recently it's been mostly Windsor. So there aren't that many. But, I mean, I think, you know, there's probably over 100 high school kids out there somewhere, right, that, that oh, you know, who knows yeah. if they're eating or not. Yeah. And it is – I had a question for Craig um, or Beth. Does this also include um, the our preschool population? Um, it can. It's school age, yeah, right? Good. School age. School age, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Basically, birth to eighteen is summer meals. So. Yeah, yeah. they can. They can. Could the co-op nursery school and Four Corners Child Center send something out? Yes. Yeah. To get those yeah. kids. Are those? The, the, they're not open right now, right? Uh, the, no. Four Corners. They, no. Could get, they could get the word out, though. You're right. I, I thought Val reopened Four Corners. Maybe she oh, did. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, if she did, then we could be potentially dropping meals off there even. I'll find out. That's right. Her. I, I'm, I'm, I thought I heard that, but I'll find out. My neighbor is on the board of um, the preschool, so I can reach out to her and see what she thinks of that idea. But at least she's got the, she's got the emails of her parents, so she could easily get that out there. And uh, yeah, that would be, yeah. I, I think we can just continue to advertise this. Uh, and I agree with Craig too. I think we should follow up on um, on providing, you know, again, we want to go slow, uh, which is unusual to hear from me, but but I mean, I think, you know, we're, we're getting calls from, you know, potentially people in motels and nursing homes. And, you know, I, I think this, there's a lot of different places this could go in the next year or two. And I think we should keep an open mind about that, and knowing our, you know, that that's sort of build, building up that program. I'm wondering if we might be able to get a deal on packaging from companies in this situation, just because, um, you know, they're one, it's a good marketing for them to get more business, and two, you know, a lot of the educational resources out there have become free or at a reduced price, and I'm wondering if any meal packaging places have thought of that as like an advertising thing for them to make some more money right now, and if we can get, I don't know, if we could take that angle, we might get some discounted packaging prices. That's, that's um, a good idea. Meal packaging right now is in high demand. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, Never mind. <laughs> so I'm working with so Swish, White River. Those guys have been treating us really well. Oliver yeah. Packaging, the, the company that we just hooked up with, yeah. trying to keep up as much as possible. I mean, I think I just talked with Kittredge. I'm, I'm utilizing every resource that I have 
um, and can think outside the box to try to get the best quality or best, you know, value. Um, it's just right now, everybody, I think food producers wish they had such a demand as um, packaging companies, but um, <laughs> yeah. Like Angie, yeah, but <laughs> that's your that can be your side gig. Um, so yeah, we'll put Angie on that. We're working. I mean, we're working on it. It's just the more that we can buy in bulk, also the better. It's like so, like all of our packaging. If we can buy thirty-two cases of their product, they'll give us a. Thirty or forty dollar discount per case. Yeah, it's just a big. I was kind of conservative behind that because it's just a big number <laughs> at thirty five cases. So yeah. you know, I'm trying to kind of keep it, re, you know, conservative and, and get like eight to ten cases at a time, so it just doesn't seem so big, but. Those are, you know, we can we can look at that option also. Buying in bulk. It's a long haul, like going through the summer even, it sounds like we're going to burn through that quickly. Gonna, yeah, we are. So. Yeah. Hey, Craig, one last question from me. How, yep. how, much, came how much came back today on those buses? Did, did we have much? 18. Oh, that's not bad. 18. And that's 15 up. from, oh, uh, 12 from Heartland, five, uh, six from Weathersfield. Wow. Okay. That's not bad. And none from Windsor. So that's Windsor wanted, bad. you know, like, so, yeah. And is that basically throwaway? We can't reuse that at all? No, actually, we uh, disassembled them and brought them down to the church in Windsor. Nice. And that's they're going to reserve them. Yeah. So we kept the milk and the juice and, the, and all of those. We're counting those anyways. I mean, we yeah. can count those. So there was no loss. Great. That's perfect. One last thing from me. I just, without the support from David and all you guys, um, we're nothing. So I really do appreciate all your support and um, continued cheerleading because we need it as much as anybody right now. So thank you. Thank you. I was sitting here earlier thinking, oh my gosh, he just started serving meals in August. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, you're amazing, Craig. A challenge, right? <laughs> <laughs> what a crazy six and seven months this has been. <laughs> oh, it's yeah, it is. Yeah. It's nuts. Literally nuts. <laughs> it's been fun. It's fun. It's, it's been good. It's been great. Yeah. Uh, awesome. All well, right. We'll talk face part way through the yeah. week. Thanks, Craig. There you go. We'll yep. rest. Well done, Craig. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Yeah. Good job, Thank Craig. Bye-bye. Okay. So, David and Christine, do you guys have other COVID-19 updates you want to give? Uh, we could quick quickly summarize our, our continuity of learning just briefly. Yeah, yeah and I know Angie's on the phone, too. So, uh, yeah. She's going to lead on that, so maybe she wants to... Do you yeah, want to? Andrew, do, you, do you want to talk just about the ba basics? Most of it came out in my letter to parents and the staff. I think the biggest question right now, and we're going to tackle it a little bit tomorrow morning. There's still a little bit conf confusion around how this work is going to be assessed, mm -hmm. and and you know because we've we've got one end of the on one end of the spectrum where certain teachers have told certain kids, you know, none of this counts. Don't worry about it, and we'll get on top of that because that's just misunderstandings and miscommunication. And then you've got people on the other side saying, if you don't do this work, you're going to stay back and, or you're going to go to summer school. And so you got these two extremes out there, very small numbers, but those are the things that parents pick up on. And so we've got to get a unified message out one more time to parents and kids about the fact that, you know, you, you know, we really want you to do this work. We don't want any regression. We want kids to continue to make progress. Uh, I know teachers are putting out really, really good uh, um, uh, projects and uh, assignments that, you know, I think are probably 
more creative than when we were sitting in 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 rows in classrooms you know which is which is exactly what we wanted but it's it's going to take a little while to get that unified message out to staff and i'll tell you the thing about staff and, and with parents parents believe their their teachers right i mean and the kids believe their teachers whatever the teacher says is it, it's the way it is and so We've just got to work hard and we'll figure we'll work on this tomorrow morning. We have an ad administrative team meeting, but I did get some feedback today. I got one email this morning, you know, uh, about, you know, hey, my teacher just told my sophomore son that none of this work counts and that and it, I, I don't know, you know, where that came from. Uh, but I, I understand that pe people might have misinterpreted stuff that we said, but I think the assessment is a tough piece. Um, but that said, Angie, do you want to talk a little bit about wh what we're doing with the plan? Is Angie still with us? Angie, we can't hear you. She might be on mute or sometimes she has a little microphone problem. I think you might be muted. She's not muted. Uh, let me see. No, Angie's not muted. Oh, we can't hear you, Angie. Try again. Refresh your page, maybe. It's my microphone. There you go. Yeah, she's had microphone issues. You're back. Ahead, now we got you. No. Nope. We had you. Uh-oh. Nope. You, you got to get through a good combo, girl. Angie, I would leave the meeting and then try to come back. Might the well, other the solution is to, to uh, mute yourself and call in. I'm here now. Ah, you got. We got you. We got you. It's just a setting, and I forget. And when I move out, uh, so I have. Um, I get. I take Zoom calls, and another a new one to me last week was called Microsoft Teams. Mm -hmm. So my computer doesn't like me going to the different flat platforms. So whenever I come back from one of those, I have to reset my mic so it knows which one, which mic. Which there's only one mic, so uh, who knows? Um, I just wanted to say that we're we're eagerly awaiting feedback from the agency of education. First of all, they sent us a letter last month, a week ago Monday, saying they hadn't received our plan, which was they had totally received our plan and sent us confirmation. And then, and now we haven't heard back from them. And I've heard that other systems have gotten you know gotten their responses much quicker. So I don't know what that means. Um, one of the, I think one of the things that we've done, which I'd be, I, I'll be interested to see if other supervisory unions thought about it the same way we did, was we asked our teachers to do a continuity of learning plan in each building, like the teacher teams, um, just so that there can be some consistency across teams and that we can see that work. Um, we can see what that looks like. And I think that it'll be an interesting thing for as an administrative team to look at that across the supervisory union at some point, probably after this is all over, um, to see where we are, where we were consistent and where we weren't to help inform what we could do to um, provide more consistency across the supervisory union. I'm hoping that we're more consistent than we're not, but um, I would anticipate some differences. Uh, so mo a lot of those have come in. I haven't actually gone through and checked off to see that I've gotten those from everybody, but a lot of them are coming in. We have not given staff a deadline on that. So that'll probably come out tomorrow. And um, I think clarity around the amount of time that students spend in academic pursuit um, has been interesting. And the guidelines we followed were on, I think on the conservative end, um, and the, then the agency came out with some that were a little bit more lofty. Um, I, I still stand by the, the academic times that we suggested. I think two to two and a half hours for seniors, I mean, for high schoolers. And then, um, you know, up an hour, up to an hour for kindergartners. And then, so anywhere between an hour and um, two and a half hours a day depending on the grade level. Um, so we have still have a few things to work out, but I think overall uh, we're, we're gonna be ready to 
to present more to the pa to the parents. Although David's letter that he wrote really did a nice job of of uh, what do you call it summarizing the key points that they need to be aware of. So, Angie, how different was what the uh, Agency of Education came out with uh, in terms of times compared to what we posted? Um, about ninety minutes more on the upper end on the upper end, but not yeah. like, what about for our K-8 kind of? Um, maybe 30 minutes more. Okay, so not not massive, but. I think. No, but I mean, I, yeah, I think not at all in the guide, in the resources that they gave us. The, the information that I suggested in our continuity of learning plan came right from one of the resources that the agency had listed. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. <laughs> we also took a lot of input from our parents. Um, and recognizing, you know, there are kind of two ends. Some parents were, were really, really overwhelmed in the beginning with um, the amount of work, and some parents, of course, want more. So we're trying to balance that and provide options for kids that want those extensions but not um, require them for all families um, and recognizing that families are in different situations and they're doing the best they can. And I have to say I'm uh, wowed every day by um, – the Heartland community, they're stepping up, not complaining. I mean, a few complaints, but mostly really supportive. Um, and the teachers as well. They've just, just then made it happen. So, yeah, and I noticed that in terms of kind of balancing that load, there, um, a lot of what teachers are posting are, are here's the minimum requirements. Here's, you know, your, what you have to do throughout the week. And then here's extra. If you feel like you want to jump on that, but they're making it much more clear, I feel like now that this is, this is additional. If you have time, if you happen to need something to do, great. If not, it's not a big deal. So I, I hope that that's helped families too. Yeah. I know um, we met with the K2 pod today. Um, they're having first and kindergarten's kind of just getting getting on board a little bit more. Um, but first and second have moved to Seesaw, the Seesaw platform, which is amazing. And they're having great success. They reported that the kids are doing uh, pretty much all the work, including the you know, options. M many kids are doing that. So that was good. We also had um, Br Brittany coordinated with Julie Gaudet from um, – Special, um, oh gosh, I always get this wrong. Special <laughs> Investigations Unit. Um, so we had DCF with CRS and Julie at our meeting today just talking about mandatory reporting in this um, time of teachers in homes with children and and um, how to go about that. And, you know, kids aren't having the opportunity like they would at school to report something because parents, parents are there. And um, so it's complicated stuff. But they're a great resource and they're going to come to all our um, pod meetings this week to share information and answer questions. So and they developed a PowerPoint presentation that we shared out with everybody that had a lot of really great information about um, all my dogs just came in here. Um, so that but really good information about um, how to pick up on kind of abuse, possible abuse. <laughs> Chase, you need to leave. <laughs> <laughs> okay, possible abuse situations that might be happening um, and how to pick up on those in this kind of weird time, how to, you know, not to pry, you know, trying to like maintain a little bit of a balance, but also making sure that you're seeing things in a little bit of a different way than we used to. And they did clarify, I know the admin team had questions because kids are um, considered in school, so truancy is a tricky issue right now. Right. Um, but they did, they did say that they would like us to report um, if, a, and, and our plan is if a kid doesn't show up, obviously we're trying to make connection and we're keeping track in multiple spreadsheets of our kids. But if, if I can't get a hold of, or um, it ratchets up the, the chain, um, a, a student or a parent after three weeks, we're going to report to DCF and, and not in a punitive way, just in a way like we're concerned about this child. Um, not that it would open an investigation, but um, they talked about just coordinating agency services so that we can wrap around and can support families. So um, if it's a kid with a with an open case, those um, time limits are, are much less. So if we don't hear from a student in a week and a half, if they're an open 
a case through DCF, then we're going to report sooner. So I just along those lines, Christine, I just saw a question from Sarah. I think it's an important question. You know, what have the attendance stats been like? Right. I think that that's <clears throat> that's important. Um, one of the things that, you know, the agency in this remote environment, I think I've said this before, uh, you know, you start from the premise that everybody is present, right? Because nobody's left the state. Nobody's gone cross country. Nobody's out of the country. Um, so, uh, you know, the premise is everybody's there, but they still want that daily check-in. And we've been doing that daily check-in. But what I'm hearing from the building principals and the pods that I'm sitting in on, I mean, it's really, again, uh, quite amazing that there really is, you know, generally uh, a handful of uh, a handful of kids who, uh, and I and I don't know, you met uh, today, Christine, but would yeah. you agree it's really not a, a ton of kids? I mean, you know, I, I think. Uh, I, I would say our, our intensive meetings on Friday, we talk about about, about 20 kids. That's about it. 20? We've been talking about 20. You yeah. know, they're, they're repeating. The kids are repeating, but. Um, it's the same kids. Yeah, it's pretty much the same kids, I would say. Um, but there's only like one or two, I would say, that we that no, there's no contact. Like yeah. hasn't happened yet for whatever reason, and we're working on it and we're trying. Um, like one or two of you know 280 or 686, you know. Um, the rest are the rest of those 20 have been students of concern, um, meaning they may have been seen here or there, but not right. really doing anything or participating. I just saw Scott's question about the SRO. Um, yeah, so we do have, um, yeah. we do have, um, you know, Paul and, and, and we'll use him accordingly. It's, it's just, it's a complicated situation sending an SRO in, you know, a police officer in uniform to a, to a household. Um, it's just, it's it, families are already overwhelmed and, and, you know, very anxious state. So we're, we're carefully using that resource. Um, yeah, that may come in more when we get to the point of like three weeks out, and we still and we've we've tried contacting, we've sent letters, we've called, and there's still nothing um, that we that we might look into that because then I think after three weeks of zero contact, that's yeah. that's, cons that's really right. yeah, especially depending on the family, like Christine said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I want to get back just quickly to the, the continuity of learning plan and the and the hours that were expected. I, I, I think what we've said to our staff and, and to the parents to some degree, it's a work in progress. So we may find that we'll be able to increase at the K-8 level and we'll be able to increase at the high school level. I think we just wanted to take the first week or two and just, you know, we're going to be in this for the long haul. We're going, you know, into June with this. And so it's just what we have to remember is that for every two hours of work, say at the high school level or two and a half hours of work at the high school level for the core content areas, You've got about 30% of those kids who are also receiving some level of, uh, you know, PT or SLP work or or one-on-one -on -one work with a tutor or you know, so their day their day starts to fill up uh, pretty pretty quickly. They've got these little you know enrichment uh, assignments from their unified art teachers and yeah. So it's I think we're just gonna have to feel it out and get a sense of what and we may get some feedback from the state that we haven't you know we haven't put enough time into the plan. So we'll 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 adjust when we get that feedback. They must be going crazy there now, though, because they just got 264 of these 24-page plans. So I, I don't know who's reading through those. I'm just glad it's not me. I have a question. Are we wait? Are we waiting for input from AOE on how we're going to um, measure or assess? I mean, what does assessment look like? Yeah, I mean, starting today, theoretically, teachers were supposed to go back to their their one, two, three, four rubric in standards based assessment. Um, the, the the and I assume that's what you meant, Colleen. Right? You're not talking about any kind of standardized test or statewide well, test. I had that in mind as well. Are we we're not doing standard? Is that still true that there'll be no standardized test? Yeah, not not this year. No, okay. no, aspect, no aspect this year. We also you had talked a, we had talked a little bit about pass fail. Right. 
versus right. um right. I forget the word versus our one two three four versus a yeah a grade or a, or a, a qualitative or quantitative grade yeah well the direction we're getting from the AOE is to <clears throat> especially at the middle and high school levels but they're pretty much saying pre-k to 12 you know you you you, uh, you know the past fail gets a little tricky that you should probably stay with what the kids know what the parents know we can upload that into our student information system you know power school can read all of that uh it gets really tricky at the high school level because the pass fail doesn't translate well into a quantitative epa or a or a or a, a, a transcripted you know we we've got this complicated formula behind the power school uh wall that takes these one two three fours and actually turns them into uh, a numerical transcripted yeah uh, the parents really. would kill you so, yeah so that that helps us you know because you know some, uh, some colleges don't care anymore but but some colleges do so we wanted to make sure that we we did that so pasta would be would be tricky there Beth, i wanted to i just wanted to, to um tell uh speak a little bit about the process and the conversation that we had because um we were also thinking that the power school, what's in power school is a source of data for us. And if it's skewed with a pass fail or a one three, which is how we'd have to do it. Um, we don't get a full picture of how students performed over this time. And there's two things the state wanted us to make ensure that we were, uh, whatever we did was equitable and whatever we did, did no harm. So we talked about what would be the consequences of students who were totally disengaged for whatever reason. Um, and it, having that data in power school is gonna help us develop a plan for them when we come back to school in session in the fall. For the seniors, it's um, uh, Tiffany was writing out uh, her thoughts about how that would look for a high school senior. But at the high school level for kids that didn't, um, do do work or were not engaged in a class they if they received an incomplete they would there would be a plan in place for them the following term for them to do that work and so we're fleshing that out just to, to um determine what that would look like particularly in grade seven and up so part of me i like this whole assessment thing it just makes me so uncomfortable in the sense of like i feel like it's just assessing you know how privileged you are <laughs> yeah. because it's yeah. it's like how how can we assess this situation and, and everyone's different how they and i know it's like coming down from the state and we can't do much um but it's that whole thing of like i am so highly privileged both my husband and i are home we are sitting by our students we have college degrees and you know hell i was i'm a certified teacher like we can pull this off and um but there are so many families that just cannot and so why, like, then we're just assessing how privileged they are to, you know, and access good internet or, you know, and just even have two parents, like, that's so huge. And how do we deal with that? Yeah, I think that's so true, Beth. That's, I mean, you couldn't say it any, any better than that. <clears throat> I think that's really, what are we assessing, right? Are we assessing parental support or are we assessing, you know, a student's ability to perform? A task, and I think that's we got to keep that central uh, to 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 this conversation. I know the superintendents are working at the state level to try to, you know, not that the state doesn't see it; they they get they get that piece. But uh, I, I think we have to keep it in mind constantly uh, that that's that's really what what we're assessing. You, you you said it perfectly, which is why we kind of, you know, we backed off a little on the minutes. You know, we just and and then if a parent or a family wants some enrichment activity, and we've got that, we've got kids that are taking instrument lessons, and we've got kids that are that are drawing and painting with our art teachers in private one-on-one -on -one lessons. I mean, that's great, right? If you want that, and you've got a kid who's talented in that area, then then you know, reach out. And I think I'm going to talk more about that in my next letter home to parents that. We're willing to do whatever the parent wants to do, right? I mean, because that's that's. Yeah, really I'm more worried. I mean, I just know I'm sitting next to Silas, my first grader. Nothing happens if I'm not sitting next to him. You know, <laughs> like, 
And so, and I have a feeling many first graders are this way. And yeah. so it's just that whole thing of like how many parents and are some just seventh kind of graders. Yes, <laughs> no, I'm going to say, and my nine year old's not much better. And uh, so, yeah, it's just how do you, you balance that? And that's, it just makes me, it makes me so sad too of like, oh my God, these kids are, you know, they're missing so much potentially and there's just so much potential neglect happening. And um, yet I'm stuck here in my home and can't do a damn thing about it. Well, some of what we are doing, Beth, just to, and you're absolutely right, um, but we, um, part of the documentation that we are keeping, we are identifying those kids and assigning support staff members to set up one-on-one -on -one meetings with those kids. Um, it's not perfect because some kids still don't show up, but there are kids taking advantage of working. Um, it's not a parent sitting next to the child, but it's a, a, a support staff member sitting like this with kids helping them with their work. Um, so we're, we're trying to address that in the, in the ways that we can. And yeah. for some of the older students where paras are doing that, they're setting up, um, they're helping the students set up schedules and, you know, organize, um, you know, where are all the links that I need to be able to access all the meetings and, you know, what does this look like? And that seems to have helped. I mean, it, it really took our, um, I don't know, Christine, you can speak to this too, but our intensive meeting, um, kids went down quite a bit. I mean, we got to take a lot of kids off that list um, from the beginning because those supports really right. worked, which yeah. was great. That's great. Yeah. yeah. But I think um, so I just I want to I want to make a couple comments. Sorry. Do you need to finish that thought first, Christine? No, I was just get, I was just saying part of our um, rationale for collecting the data and grading is really to give us a sense of what we need to do to support these kids when they come back. And we were going to be a huge disparity. Um, just we're, we're going to have to figure out how to deal with. So you go ahead, Angie. So yeah, so I just, um, first of all, uh, Sarah, I think you put the comment in about her, what Hanover's doing past no, uh, no credit, credit, credit plus. They're also a um, hundred point scale they they do traditional grading so it's sort yeah. of apples and footballs um <laughs> and the other thing is that when the state first came out with the continuity learning plan they had um curriculum and, ass and assessment in there as one of the areas and they changed that to well it was instruction and assessment they changed that to instruction and feedback so i think we have to be thinking about it in terms of feedback so if a student has turned in an assignment um, the assessed piece is, is the feedback that the teacher would provide back to the kid. This is what is going, what, this is what you're doing well, this is what you still need to work on. It's a very different way of looking at feedback than giving the kids a test. Um, and I don't know how many, how many staff will feel comfortable giving students something like a, a short answer test in this situation because there's, there's no, guarantee that the kid will have been the one doing the work or the kid will have done the work independently. So I think teachers are going to be really creative in terms of how they, um, what evidence they're looking at for what, um, for the learning. And it's, it's more than just a, a test. And some of what we heard today just in the K2 meeting was um, they're going more off of what they're what they're getting from the student in the one-to-one -one sessions or in the small group sessions versus assessing the, um, the, con the, you know, content, the completed content that's coming back. Yeah. So it's, you know, talking with the student through what they're doing and, and what that looks like versus, um, you know, tr trying to take out that whole who's doing the work situation. Right. That makes sense. Okay. You mean I can't do Nicola's homework? <laughs> you are more than welcome to give it away. You go for it. <laughs> do I do have a question? Do we have? Do you have any concerns about um, not being equitable? I mean, even across the state, I know there's so many school systems outside of Vermont that are choosing not to do assessments or count this work um, because they can't provide equal services to everyone <clears throat> and I, I don't really I don't have a follow-up to that I guess just is there any reason to worry about I don't see how you can be equal across the board so right. I, I, do we I worry about that, so when we 
I, I just don't, I think you keep the equity lens at the yeah. forefront and you be think and be thinking about how, because it's, it's going to happen. We can't control what's happening in the homes of our students. Yeah. And we think about what we can control. We can control that we're advising teachers that first thing that they're doing is making that connection with the kid and the social emotional well-being of that child. That's that's our message in our continuity yeah. learning plan. That that's the most important thing we're doing at this time, and the learning is also important, but not as important. So if we're really looking at the whole child, and we need to collect that data in order to be able to support that child when we come back into session in the fall. Um, so. I don't think you can ignore it, and I don't think anybody is ignoring it, or yeah. or uh, that's not the way you said it. it. I don't think you cannot worry about it, because we right. should all be worried about it. It's it's just, we have families that come from all different places, right? There's not, so, yeah. We have limits to what we can do. That's Right. Yeah. Thanks. Um, well, I do want to keep us moving. I think we've got a pretty good update. Um, yeah, and that's it, good. Yeah, and uh, Christine and David and Brittany um, and Angie, it, if you guys need us, we can come together there. And I, I feel like you guys dealt with a whole, like looking back at the minutes of March 16th, like usually I don't feel like any time has passed between meetings. And that meeting seemed like an eternity ago. And you guys have done a crap load of work in the yes. meantime. Um, yeah. Mind boggling amount of work, actually, because we still in session when we last had our meeting. Uh, it's amazing. So. And teachers, teachers too, please pass along, um, uh, you know, my, my thanks to the teachers who just, I can't imagine the number of hours that they've spent, you know, just figuring out the Google Classroom and creating assignments in a completely new way. Um, so thank you. Thank you to all of you. Yeah. What might be yeah. neat is, um, so I know we do, of course, have some teachers that are pretty stressed out. I mean, like everybody is, you know, um, but maybe it would be cool if you guys sent something to them, a video message or something just super quick. Hey, yeah. you know, we're thinking of you guys and, you know, we know you're working hard kind of thing because I know they, okay. they know yeah. you're thinking of them, but um, it might be just a nice, some sort of pick me up, you know? Yeah. Great idea. Yeah, that's a great idea. We're we're getting our kids into writing letters again during this time to family members and things like that. Is there a way to write to teachers, like if uh, like yeah. a physical letter? Yeah, we have their addresses, and um, so if I just send it to the school and then you'll send it to their home, or, or I can just give or, you the address. I've I've asked them permission to share addresses. Okay. Um, That'd be great. Okay. Nobody said no, so I think I'm I'm good to go. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I was just thinking the the picture that the teachers and and admin uh, yeah. and staff did with holding the the letters up. Maybe we could do one of those too, um, that we could send it out made me cry. to the post. <laughs> yeah, I mean that was so yeah. fantastic. Maybe we could yeah. do something like that um, and write letters. You know, they would they would love that. They are. I will say. Um, they are working incredibly hard. Um, I would say the the. The plus in this is they've um, strengthened their team, team, um, teamwork together. They really are figuring things out. The middle school team today sent me this incredible graphic for, uh, and it may have gone out this afternoon. They were putting final touches on it today, just like a guide to the week to help um, families and kids stay on track, know what's expected. I mean, it was actually. I'll share it with you because I was. I was just. They're really coming together um, as as teams, which is really nice to see, supporting each other. So, um, that's they would appreciate some positive encouragement for sure. Yeah. The other thing we're working on getting rolling while um, Christine's sending that out is um, some more PBIS stuff. Just uh, you know, it took me a while to figure, wrap my head around how we were gonna. Um, keep the expectations rolling and keep, um, you know, thinking about character trait of the month and all that stuff. So uh, I started making videos, or I developed a visual for expectations, primarily for K through five, but then uh, we did a rubric for the rest. Um, but I took that visual and then I created um, video assemblies, if you will, with uh, the PowerPoint presentations that we normally do. 
Um, and I sent that out to teachers today, at least the first, I think I did the first three parts of it and there'll be four parts total. So we're trying to get that stuff rolling too for some, not to overwhelm families with more stuff, but at the same time, something fun that's something we typically do at school anyway. That's fantastic. Christine, do you got it yet? Yeah, I got it. I just found it. I, I have so many, so many drives. So. Okay, let me share it. <laughs> ah. Yeah, it's it's really they've they've done a really nice job. Um, not Sarah, Sarah Taylor. Yes. Oops. You guys all have two emails up. Can you just click on the present now? Uh, yep, but I'm I'm on two computers, so let me. Yes. Oh, okay. Never mind. <laughs> no, it opens faster because I know right where it is. If I can do that, uh, you can go to the next thing, Nikki. While I find it, go for it. Actually, that's a good idea. Um, so, uh, so we had, um, and this will come up again in the resignations, although it's been removed from this agenda. Um, the treasurer of um, our, our school treasurer um, sent a letter of resignation um, to me and David and David Ormston. Um, and she is the joint treasurer um, for both the town and the school. And in digging into the regs, um, David Baker and David Ormston have um, figured out that it needs to be the same person pretty much um, because they need to be moving money between the two accounts, this um, town and the school. Um, and so we were concerned, um, but we have talked to her um, pretty extensively. Dave Ormston, um, Dr. Baker and I uh, all got together and tried to see um, what changes could be made because it really was a position, it was a situation where she wasn't feeling comfortable um, with everything being at the SU level and not feeling like um, she was part of the picture, which is understanding. And also a bit of um, some feeling that the former um, school town treasurer um, had some really intense uh, ways of dealing with things and um, not nobody can replicate the ways that she dealt with stuff. And so I think that there was some feeling of not being as successful because nobody can figure out how the previous treasurer did anything. Um, so we've had a lot of discussions. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna try it again. Um, so she, I don't know if she's formally withdrawn her resignation, but she's going to keep trying. Um, we're going to work with the, um, she's going to work with the SU um, to figure out, I'll keep going for a second. Um, she'll, she's going to keep, she's going to work with the SU um, financial office to find an ally that she can really um, trust with what's going on financially. Um, and we're going to, we're gonna stay the course for a little bit. So fingers crossed that this all works. Um, and I think that I think that her um, resignation sent up a bit of a red flag that that we just needed to be a little bit. Um, there just needed to be more communication. And so yeah. I think that that it's opened up that communication pathway. Um, David, do you have yeah. anything else to add to that? No, I was just gonna say I think it was really great, Nikki, that you uh, reached out also, and David did again, and. Uh, you know, and Ed seemed to, you know, we, we Ed conferenced in with us and, you know, he seemed like he really wanted to accommodate. I think, I think we've got enough people in that business office where we can find a user-friendly face in that office. I keep going back to Deanna. Deanna is very organized and very, uh, you know, she's a, she's sort of a teacher at heart. She likes teaching people things, you know, um, so I, I think we can. I think, you know, I, I think when we're ready, we can get her hooked up with the right person to, to make this work. And I'm glad we didn't just give up on it. I'm glad we kept we kept going with it. Yeah, and it, it sounds like it sounds like she's doing better. Um, so I, I'm hoping that we're good. <laughs> so, so we'll turn back to you, Christine. I think is, unless right. there's any other comments on that. 
Yeah, I just had, I needed to turn my mic on. Sorry, you didn't, now you can hear me. So as an aside, because I'm the warrant signer, I'll just tell you how it's working. So um, Gail McCoy is emailing me the warrant, but my, of course, minus the entire stack mm. of um, receipts and invoices. And if I see something funny, which I haven't yet, I ask. So I haven't done that yet, but I would ask her to. And then I put an electronic signature on the front page of the warrant and uh, email it back to her. And that represents that I've looked at it. And the truth is that I've looked at the top pages. So I don't see things going past that that look abnormal to past months. But the truth is I'm not going through every single page like I was. And uh, and I did hear from Gail that early on that <laughs> she, she was going to be somehow accomplishing what the Heartland Treasurer was looking at um, just be, so there wouldn't have to be so much back and forth. Um, I'm, I hope that they can figure that out so that everyone is more comfortable with their role. I think it was that conversation that spurred um, I th there's been challenges all along. There's definitely, um, uh, to, to bring it to the bigger picture, what um, I think <clears throat> what David and David um, helped me to understand was that the, the state has not caught up with the legislation that they've written. And so the town treasurer position really doesn't match what the state has mandated that we do at the SU level. And so these poor town treasurers and school treasurers um, have no control and aren't in the loop um, as far as what's happening. And then on top of that, we've moved to um, an electronic financial system that even our financial crew can't figure out. Um, and so then to ask, a, you know, almost well, volunteer position to understand a system that our financial gurus can't even figure out um, is a, it's a big ask. And so we really, all of us kind of came down to the idea that, that this is really, we, we just need to find a way to meet the existing regulations, um, the way that they're written now and that this position and this is not ideal for anyone. And it, <clears throat> it, it actually is not written well for anyone. So <clears throat> I, I think that we kind of got there a little bit. You know, the, the other thing that's interesting along those lines, Nikki, um, and then Christine, you can you, you can carry on, but um, I think that's a really important point about how the statute, the statutes have not kept up with a lot of this centralization. And one of the things we talked about uh, at our meeting, and I've reached out now twice uh, to legislators during this session. I think we've talked about this before at the board level, um, but we, we now at the SU, have the biggest payroll of, of any of the entities in our supervisory union. And uh, and consequently, the way the state money comes in, both in terms of uh, assessment from the, well, assessments from the local districts, but then the other special ed state money, uh, you know, all, all of that reimbursement money, it only comes in three times a year. So what happens is you can end up in a real cash flow crunch because you have to make payroll. And what most districts do, like Ed did with the Heartland District uh, not too long ago, is you, you just open a line of credit, right? So that you can you can keep paying people. And then at the end, when that state check comes in, you pay the state back. But right now, the statute doesn't allow supervisory unions to borrow money. You can't borrow money at, at, at that level. You can't own property. Um, you can only lease property for up to three years. It's, and there's a lot of restrictions that aren't consistent with the kind of centralization they've required of us at uh, at the supervisory unit level. So I think it's 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 complicated, and I think uh, David was great in listening and and helping us kind of work through this. And and I think in the end, uh, I think we can I think we can bring her along with me starting to feel more. <clears throat> he just doesn't know any of this stuff. So all of a sudden, Ed will call and ask for a a, a prepayment on on the Heartland assessment for a half a million dollars. And I'll tell you, if I was the treasurer, I'd be sitting there saying, and, and what, what do you need that half a million dollars for? Right? It, it gets complicated. So 
I think we just need to walk her through the steps and she'll be fine. I, I have one more point to make. It's, I, I was, I'm glad that David just reminded me about this. So quickly, it was just a couple of meetings ago that we, um, at this board, okayed, um, I'm not sure exactly what we called it, but we were gave um, David and Ed the authority to borrow short term from the Heartland uh, uh, fund for for building projects. What's it called? Capital reserve. Oh, the capital reserve. Yeah. Yeah. Remember? Um, I think we were in the library when we did that. <laughs> so that was no, that was year ago. <laughs> that was the um, that was to borrow. That was to open up a line of credit. Um, yeah. Oh, the, what did, was that town meeting, Nikki? Actually, happens at town meeting. Okay, we did it at town meeting then. Yeah, that, that's that what I remember. Been, yeah, that might have been a year ago. Yeah. No, it was the town meeting. Nikki's right, and so that that made the one of our community members stood up and questioned that, and so I just think it, I just wanted to make get this to say this out loud, and um, to make myself feel better, <laughs> and that we all continue to be a. a observant of that because with at some point tonight we may talk about the dire uh position of education funding in vermont in the next two years and you know we don't want to be um overdoing that short-term borrowing uh because we feel like we're pressured to so i think that's just something that we should all look at ongoing and to go back to that, my understanding of the short-term borrowing was just to meet payroll and then we pay it back. Um, so it's a it, it's a stopgap because payroll has to happen right. every two weeks, um, and we don't always have money in the bank on the exact day that payroll happens. So, but I don't, as far as I understand, we're not actually borrowing money from that on any other type of basis because we haven't approved that <laughs> okay christine why don't you show us what it looks um, cool is is my screen presenting right now yes yeah it is okay. it is yeah what, what 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 are you presenting uh, remind me again uh, the middle school worked uh together last week to come up with um a, a collaborative um plan for students uh, some of the some of the issues we were having were lots of different uh, assignments in different places from different people and teachers not recognizing how much work each individual middle school um, content teacher was assigning. So they worked together to come up with a plan. They created a graphic, which is I don't think they went out it went out yet because I, there was a, a little a misspelling that um, they were going to fix today. But um, I, I just wanted to show you because it just to me, it was just a sign that they are working together somehow virtually to create um, uh, efficient ways for, you know, educating their kiddos, making sure the kids have their needs met and know where to go for information. And so I was just pleased with their efforts. And I think it'll be, I think it'll be helpful for students to have an outline of where everything is and what the expectations are by day. So that. Yeah, that looks great, Christine. That's yeah. Great. I would yeah, yeah. Parent. I need one of those for my own work. Yeah. We, we got ours and it got two thumbs up from the household. We just all went over it as a family. Oh, you got it. Okay. Hopefully they fix that. Um, nice. Yeah. 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 Bring, I don't uh, any. yeah you should bring that uh, to the team meeting tomorrow. Yeah, too, tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. They did a really nice job. So that's a nice layout. That's a really nice layout. Took a lot of collaborating t times and shifting things around so that. They weren't um, um, asking too much of kids. I mean, they really had to work together to make a plan. So just kudos to them. Yeah, pass it along to the middle school team that that we, I'm jealous. <laughs> well, I know the, the grade level, grade alike teachers are working together as well um, to come up with plans, which is which is super helpful. But this, this was a larger collaboration, lots of. Yeah, and it's a really cool. Yeah. It's, it's a cool demonstration. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna keep us moving. Um, so we are now on to um, item C, which is a list of resignations, some of which make me very sad. Yeah. I, I, I have a lot of them. 
you want to come in? <laughs> David, I, go through them? yeah, I'll go through them. And I shared, um, I got one today from um, Teresa. So I shared it with you, David. I don't know if you um, got that just before the meeting started. I did. Okay. I did. And I said that whenever you send those, don't be afraid to copy Tina in HR because Tina's okay. the one that keeps them in the folder. And then, yeah, but we, I got it. Okay. So, um, we had um, a resignation from Suzanne Wood, and um, that is based on the increase in the music position and her situation. So I, do you have to approve these one at a time or all together? Or do you, don't you have to accept these? Yeah. They, yeah, we have to accept them. I think we can do it all at yeah, once. You can do it as a group, yeah. Okay. Um, one from Angie Carpenter Henderson, she, um, was somewhat recruited by Norwich University to be a teacher of teachers. So she is going to move on to the next phase in her career. She's nervous, but excited, and she's definitely ready for, for the challenge. So although she has done an incredible job at Heartland and will be missed by everyone, um, we're happy for her because this is something that she, that she's really looking forward to do, to doing. Um, and she'll have a great impact on future teachers, which we'll all benefit from. So um, the one that came in tonight is Teresa Semantic. She is um, going to retire um, officially. I know she's gone to part-time and um, she, is, she made the decision um, just about a week ago. She came to chat with me and um, has decided it's time for her to retire and she's wrestled with it. She's been at Heartland, I think, uh, 40 years. I mean, she's been there for a long time. She's a staple. She's been, um, you know, in my experience with her, willing to learn, upbeat, positive. The kids love her. She's like, she's the cheerleader at Heartland. So she will be missed, but um, she, in her mind, is able to um, wrestle with the decision because she can come in and volunteer and her grand one of her grandchildren will be in kindergarten next year so she'll be back she just won't be in the in the same capacity so those are the three um we did we do mics last time we met i couldn't remember my cow we did not scott's no so i don't i don't think we did i don't think we did so my cow has turned in his letter of resignation as well um, again, another <laughs> long, long standing um, staff member at Heartland um, loves the kids, loves, loves the school. And um, it's just at that time where he's ready to ready to be ready to be retired. But, um, you know, he, he may help us out if we need help. Um, he's our water testing guy. So if Jim feels like that's going to be um, something Mike can do, I think Mike's willing. And um, so those are the four that I have tonight. So I can make a motion and yeah. I just wanna say that like, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I kind of wonder if this list of people's total years in Heartland adds up to over a hundred years. <laughs> like, <Okay. laughs> it's a, like, so yeah. like, the majority of these teachers have been here for a really long time. Yeah. So, um, no, that's and staff. Um, okay, so are there any motions to accept the resignations of um, Angie Carper -Henders Carpenter Henderson, uh, Teresa Semantic, uh, Susan Wood, and Mike Howe? Anybody motion? I motion I to what you said. Okay, I see Beth, and then I'm going to go with a Scott second. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and so, if there's no further discussion, um, so we will. Um, so we'll vote to accept the resignations of um, those four individuals with regrets and uh, wishing them the best. Um, the majority of them in their retirement, and hopefully they'll come visit and be able to be in the building in a more playful way. So um, I'm just going to go with the everybody turn their mics off um, and we'll all say I or nay. And um, so I think everybody's got their mics off now. So all those in favor of accepting um, 
the four retirements, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. Um, so, Christine, Do please pass on to everybody that we really aye. appreciate. Aye. Yeah. 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 It's it. We're in kind of a weird place because normally we really honor and celebrate retirements at the end of the year. So, dealing with how to do that to postpone it. But same thoughts about graduation. You know, I'm thinking about how we how we move forward with that because the kids deserve something. Um, so, more to come. Um, thinking about how to. I mean, we can do something virtually. Uh, it's just figuring out if that's what the kids want or they want to wait until we can get back together. So. Um, I'm digging to do, but um, I can share that we have been um, interviewing for positions, and I, I can share one um, one um, position that we filled actually this afternoon. If if the board would like to hear about that, I'm happy to share. Yeah, is it uh, David? Is, are we at a point where we can talk about? The position in public session, or should we wait till executive session? No, no, I think you can talk about that in public session. That's fine. Okay. So um, we've been we've been hiring for our, our part time music position. I don't have an I don't have an uh, an update on that one yet. Um, but we did uh, <laughs> that health position last week, and we offered the position to. Um, Lacey Stever. I don't know if anybody knows her, but she is um, a fairly new teacher. She has two years under her belt. She's from, oh gosh, I'm going to forget now, uh, uh, fairly, fairly Vermont. So she's fairly local and she's moved back to Brownsville, actually. Um, yeah, she's in Brownsville now. She's in Brownsville. And she's really, really excited about um, coming to Heartland. She had wonderful, wonderful, wonderful things um, that people shared about her. Um, so we're excited. And I'm isn't gonna... she somehow connected to a former PE teacher from her boyfriend's dad was the PE teacher at Heartland for many years. She shared that, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was just really wanted to say uh, good night to Miss Bourne and Miss Preston. Oh, <laughs> good night. <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's that's. Well, great. I was just like so excited to see both your faces on the screen. Okay. I was like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we'll accept the because we have to um, a motion yeah. the hiring. We'll just do that at the next meeting. You could or you could do it tonight. It does. There's no need to wait. It's up to you. Okay. Um, so, does anybody want to make a motion to what her name was? Lacey. Lacey Stever. Lacey yep. Stever. Stever, yes. right? S T E V E R. Okay. S T E V E R. Okay. Um, anybody want to make a motion? I'll make a motion. motion. I can second. Okay. 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 So Sarah made the motion, and Beth is second. Um, what position is she taking? Uh, she'll be uh, primarily K-5 PE health. Awesome. I just missed that at the beginning <clears throat> before I um, vote. Yeah, she's going to be <laughs> We're really excited. That, awesome. That's Perfect. all I need. Yeah. <laughs> I do need to like to see her. It's going to be so hard to replace Angie, but she's, this is, she seems very good, and I think her and Chad will work really, really well together. Awesome. Great. That's fantastic. Okay, so um, keep you posted on the yeah. interviews, and next month we'll hopefully have some more people to bring forward. So, yeah. Okay, so we need to vote still. Um, so everybody's mics off. Uh, so all those in favor of hiring Lacey Stever for the PE health position, please say aye. 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 All those opposed. Okay. Who made that motion? Um, it was uh, Sarah and Beth. Okay, Sarah and Beth, good. And uh, yeah, that's great. And I'll, I'll reach out to her tomorrow, uh, Christine. I think okay. I think she's all set. You sent me her resume I and did. her paperwork. So I think Tina's got it already. It's a question of whether she gets the contract or a letter of intent. But you did you explain? I, I can explain that to her again, too, just so she knows the difference. Yeah. 
Great. Okay. Um, okay, so the last um, item on the agenda is uh, kind of a, a peek at the, um, and I don't have a very descriptive peek, but a, a peek at the statewide budget. Um, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but um, this year, uh, the taking a step back, the um, the school ed the statewide ed fund is paid for with a combination of property taxes um, and uh, like rooms and meals, lodging and lottery. Um, so in this uh, isolation scenario. Um, rooms and meals, lodging and lottery have tanked. Um, and so there goes the Ed Fund. Um, the federal government um, gave a bolus of money uh, that will prop up the Ed Fund. Um, the Ed Fund will be short for this current year, 2020. Um, the scary part so we'll survive 2020 and there will be a deficit, but a lot of 2020 has already been paid for. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's less concern there. The real scary part is 2021. Um, if we continue to have um, a lot of people having lost their jobs and if the economy <clears throat> used to have crashed the way it has, and I think we're expecting a certain amount of social distancing even going into 2021, um, so there's a real concern that the Ed Fund is going to really, really um, be sucked dry. Um, and so we all need to be cognizant of that. Um, it's a scary proposition for schools. And I sent out that email earlier today. I, my attitude is that the kids are going to need the schools more than ever, and they're going to need the supports of the schools more than ever come September. Um, and in 2021, and when we're at a time where we're going to need the most support that we can possibly give them, we're going to be at a time where financially we don't have any of the support that we need. Um, so I'll open it up to you guys to go off of that conversation, but I think it's something that we need to start educating the community about. Um, I don't think that we have any solutions, and I don't really feel ready to propose any solutions, um, but it is something that we need to understand. Um, and the other, I guess the other pieces of information um, is that we've missed the deadline to RIF teachers, which I think we're ready for anyway. Um, and, uh, and then support staff, we have a little bit more flexibility if we felt that we needed to trim. Um, but again, I, personally, I'm not at a point where I'm ready to do any of that. So I'll open it up to you guys. I did get an email today from the VPA with a, a link to send an email that, you know, they craft for you requesting funds for the next, for the next school year. I think $75 million from the Fed, from the federal government to the, to be um, state of Vermont. I don't know if we'll get that, but certainly people are talking about it and setting some things in motion to get, um, more people aware and yeah request that's great funds. yeah 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 and that and that would make sense because that's about the short <clears throat> the expected shortfalls in that 70 to 80 million dollar range right now it could get worse but that's probably where that number came from yeah the um we just got an email from the school boards association actually like just 10 minutes ago and they are projecting a one hundred and fifty million dollar yeah. deficit. It was, so it's, it was a request for one hundred and seventy five million, not seventy five million. OK, well, this the, the yeah, they're just saying the deficit could be as high as one hundred and fifty million. You mean the state um, deficit? The ed, the, the ed fund deficit. Well, the ed yeah. fund. Yeah. Well, I know I, I know when during that when when he did that and I know, Nikki, you were on that. I mean, at that point, and that was a week, week and a half ago. I mean, it was it was around eighty million. So it sounds like it's growing, <laughs> you know, exponentially, <laughs> pretty yeah. quickly. So that's that's not a good thing. That's yeah. not a good thing. So I think I think the real, um, the real key to this is going to be, um, you know, a not to panic. I think b 
I mean, because you, I mean, you could still have the Fed. They could come through. I'm not really optimistic, you know, given the, some of the calamities at that level right now. But um, I think we are going to have to be careful and really take a look at our at, at our um, our situation. We'll be all right this year. And as a matter of fact, Ed told me, you know, he he's projecting, and we can get him on the agenda. Or Nikki, you can we can do more formally present next month but you know in in all of our districts because of the way we've semi shut down here we're gonna you know we're gonna end up with a pretty good fund balance at the end of this year but that's you know that's not something we we can carry into next year we can only carry that in to the year after so it, it, it's gonna if it's that kind of exponential deficit then you know we're, we're gonna be in a lot of trouble but you know what so is everybody else so, so is everybody right so, yeah. so, something's something's gonna have to give uh, Ed's recommendation right now, you know, and I think he's right, is we just try not to spend, don't hire any new staff. I mean, what Christine did tonight was replace a mm -hmm. PE teacher that was on staff, but I think we've got to be careful about introducing new positions or new support staff or, and, and yeah, so I think that's just where we, where we have to be right now. Um. So I think I think um, I might take this into executive session um, just so that people can talk more freely. Um, but I think that uh, it sounds like we're all kind of on the same page of not panicking right now and um, and staying the course and and I think David's suggestion of what he just made right now of not trying to spend a lot of money um, and not trying to do anything new and kind of cutting back on new initiatives um, and trying to hold the line where we can as far as um, budgeting goes. I mean, at least right now we're not spending a lot on materials because we know how much those cost in that budget. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, um, so I'm gonna really quickly um, move on to setting the next agenda and then we can go into executive session um, and let Diane out. Um, I don't think we'll talk for very long. I just feel like we should be able to. Hey, Nikki. Uh, Nikki uh, wanted, and please. Diana. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Scott. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Just, I mean, please, it, 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 it warrants uh, saying because the uh, WSESU negotiators are still not done with that job uh, with the teachers. They are with the support staff and so that's the, another part of the communication that's been between uh, the state and school board. I think it was on that letter that Sarah just yep. said, reminding everybody that uh, you know that's a big piece of the pie right now, and perhaps an opportunity for a lot of school districts uh, to to take another look and and again um, just re restate with the communities. Uh, along with the community, the importance of, of that uh, negotiation process and, and any long-term savings that could be had there. Yeah, and, Thanks and for you bringing know, that up. one of the things we could do, um, while Diane's still Thank on you. the line, I'm not trying to drag this out, but <clears throat> as Scott said, we did, we did uh, settle the, the uh, uh, support staff contract uh, <clears throat> actually several weeks ago, just before we went uh, we went into uh, this crisis mode, um, and uh, Scott, I don't know how you feel about this, but it's a public now. It's a public settlement. Uh, we need to ratify that tonight. We sure. can give you we can give you the one one or two or three highlights of that right now. Um, it will only take about two minutes, three minutes, and then we could we could take a motion to ratify that tonight um, because Nikki's going to have to put her signature on that contract. Yeah. Uh, as the, as the board chair um so do you, you. Do you want to take, take a minute and just do that yeah, and say, it, it, yeah. so so um and scott you can fill in the blank scott if you want to but i'll try to do this quickly first of all the benefits were negotiated by the vermont uh, commission for school employees so we didn't have much say in the benefits the truth is we didn't lose a lot of money in the benefits because we were already offering a a, a good pack a good benefits package a matter of fact um, our support staff, basically, uh, you know, there was literally no out-of-pocket 
expenses or costs and and there there will be next year but the district pays first so in essence unless they've got some major medical issues <clears throat> they're not going to see a lot of out-of-pocket expense even as we go into even as we go into next year but but that was a consideration that you know it it it, it definitely leaned in the teacher favor but it didn't lean necessarily in support staff favor. so in salary we spent a lot of time on salary and we really felt with all the talk that was going on statewide about a $15 minimum wage, our minimum wage was more in the 14, uh, maybe 14, $14 and 30 cents or 40 cents, um, somewhere in there. So what we did is we added a dollar to that base step. So now, um, and now the, the base pay for our support staff will be in that $15 uh, range and I think you know that that just sets a tone for probably the folks on our staff that need it the most you know our cafeteria workers our custodians as we bring in new people to support staff positions we want to be equally competitive uh, and, uh, and 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 so that's how the negotiating team felt um, the other areas of concern were uh, around uh, we had an old uh, clause in the contract around float floaters, two days of, of float time, which made no sense because now we basically pay our paraprofessionals and our support staff on a contracted year and they get a paycheck the same amount every first and 15th of the month, much like our teachers. They like that and, and it worked. Um, so we were able to, uh, eliminate those floaters and replace those with two holidays did not change the amount of days uh that that they're that they're working um we also uh we did do a, a sign significant amount of work to the sick bank because right now the sick bank was by district and i thought this was a great concession on the part of the support staff because a lot of our support staff are at the supervisory union right now and that sick bank just wasn't strong enough to uphold it. So what we did is we took the sick bank numbers of days from each of the four districts, including the SU, Mount Scutney, Heartland, Wethersfield, and the SU, and we pulled them all together. And now there's a supervisory union wide sick bank that has, you know, probably about 400 plus days in it. So anybody uh, who has a severe illness, a terminal illness, and they're just trying to get to that long-term disability phase will be able to tap into that sick bank and we're not going to have to worry about heartlands drying up or the su's drying up or uh and 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 we did the math and i think uh i think this is this is going to work uh for us and then um the only other thing i think was uh we did get some concessions on uh paychecks because uh we were we were offering pay over the summer, you know, so they'd get their pay in September and then we'd keep paying him in July and August after the fiscal year was over. And that was not, that was not helping us financially, nor was it really getting good grades from the auditor or the IRS. So they've agreed now to take that final lump sum in June and they will, they'll, they'll uh, finance their own money over the summer. So we can close out our books on June 30th. I thought that was a nice concession uh, from them, and uh, and 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 that worked really uh, in our favor. Can you think of anything else, Scott, that I left out? I kind of went over our TA proposals. I th I think that's it. Um, you know, it's uh, it, it's a small amount of money when you think about it in terms of our professional staff, but uh, the truth is we've got a, we've got a fair number of support staff. When you put the custodians, kitchen workers paraprofessionals all in one spot um you know it's 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 almost 100 employees so uh, you know and we want to treat them well and <clears throat> keep them on board and uh and i think the negotiating team did a good job and it really was a win-win i think for uh for everybody so uh if you have any questions i can i, I can answer those or scott can um if not we could take a motion to uh, ratify the uh and by the way it's a two-year agreement which is just, it's, it's perfect because it lines up with when the next insurance uh, proposal starts to kick in. So it'll go from this year through uh, June of 22. David, I think usually you give us the language to make the motion. Right. 
<laughs> yeah. So, so the motion and Diane, I, I assume Diane is listening. So the motion would be uh, to, to to ratify the support staff uh, contract uh, for the 2021 to 2000. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, 2020 to 2022 uh, school year. Okay, so does anybody want to make the motion that David just said? I move the okay. question. Right, good, perfect. Diane's got it down, I'm sure. She's very quiet tonight, but I know she's listening. <laughs> okay, we got Beth for a second. We got Colleen to make the motion and Beth for a second. Um, okay, so everybody off of, oh, actually, is there any further discussion? Um, David and Scott, I, I, the rest of the negotiating team, um, I think that this was, the, what David just described makes a lot of sense. And I am, um, the whole minimum wage thing has always really kind of bothered me. And so I am pleased to hear that that's the direction that you guys went. Thank you. Thank you for your work on that. I know that it's not always easy. Yeah. Thank you. So, okay. Any further discussion? Or are we ready? We look ready. Okay. All those in favor of approving the support staff contract for the fiscal year 20 to 22, please, as David said earlier in his motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. Ayes have it, and it was approved. Thanks, David. That feels good having that off the table. Yeah, that's done. But, uh, good. And we are trying to get the teachers done, but it's a little tough in this remote environment. And quite frankly, that their contract is a little more complicated, but we'll keep you posted. We do have a proposal out there right now. We'll we'll see what happens. Okay, sounds good. Great. Um, okay, so uh, now we're setting the agenda for the next meeting. Um, I think uh, we have a COVID update. Um, hires and resignations um yeah. and um financial I would have a budget update from ed yeah. so yeah, yeah that would be good that would be um, good. So I'll, we'll either invite him or i'll talk to him ahead of time um he's lonely he's lonely. would it be would it be possible to also get some sort of statewide update whether you know from our legislators or just to get a sense of what the thinking is at the state level about how these you know how this crisis is going to be dealt with yeah, for next year that's a great idea sarah yeah. and maybe we could even i don't know maybe we could even invite a couple of the legislators to join us yeah that that's night. a great idea yeah what are the conversations that are going on right around yep. the state i did reach out to all all of them this week uh the end of the end of last week and you know they're all you know they they don't know now but they think they will know in a in a week or two but you know we'll see but it would be good to get some word from them yeah yeah i think that's a great idea so we'll see who's willing to join us um the other thing is and i know this is h perhaps harder but to get a, to try to get a sense too of you know what we're really looking at for the fall, um, I, you know, I think I think knowing ahead of time allows us to plan and just to, I, it just would be helpful to all of us, I think, for for what if those conversations are already happening at the state level, just to know, you know, I mean, if, if, is there going to be another wave and we'll have to go back into lockdown? Is there, you know, just how, how, where that thinking is right now? Based on everything I'm reading, I don't think anybody knows, but maybe in a month we'll have a better idea. Yeah, I mean, just to just to get a sense of what assumptions they're operating with at the state level. Um, yeah, yeah, I think that's a good point too. Okay. And are we still um, sticking with our same end date of school? Good question. Uh, that that comes up uh, quite often. Um, and right now, I have counting the days. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, if you know, we we did have three snow days, which is always you know fond, uh, fondly remembered. You know, um, 
but but there's a there's a there's a plan out there from the Vermont superintendents to the secretary to waive all snow days this year so that we can get this madness to a little bit faster, a little bit quicker, quicker halt, if you know what I mean. Because I'm just trying to picture how everybody's gonna feel mid June about. Uh, you know, it almost still feels kind of like different and intriguing now, but I think it's going to get old by about June 10th. Uh, but but so we'll see how that goes. It, you know, right now we are technically done June 18th. That sounds like a long way off, doesn't it? But but that's that's the date. Um, but if if we get those waived, it would actually be the Friday before that, which I think is June maybe 10th or 11th, somewhere in there. But, yeah. So we'll keep you posted on the – because he's not going to waive snow days for just one district. It's going to have to be waived across across the state. So we'll, we'll keep you posted. That would be handy. Um, is there – I'm just going to look at our radar list. I'm amazed yeah. you still have that list. That, that's great. It, I had her put it on the agenda. Nice. <laughs> I've got the agenda right here. Yeah. I think um, it's smart to have it on there to, for oh, us yeah, to be good. keeping it in yeah. mind with our meetings. That's exactly why I wanted it so that we could look That's at good. it. Um, it was on page two. I think it's interesting to see how many of those things like have uh, maybe been modified since our <laughs> conditions have changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah like physical plant yeah. security. <laughs> That's <laughs> what you right now. Um, I do, I feel like our budget's getting a little, or our budget, our agenda is getting a little long for the next meeting, but I do, um, I'm worried about our special education population. Um, and maybe, and I feel like now is too early because we're really, I, I would call day one the first real day of learning. Um, so we might put in a quick special ed update. Um, yeah, plus, I think it would be good for everybody to, I mean, Katie has essentially, Katie Ahern has essentially taken over now. I mean, Karen's kind of, you know, slowly e easing out. So I, th I think it would be good for everybody to, you know, meet with Katie and to kind of see where she's at. So we can do that yeah. either th this time or, or the time right after that. Yeah. So I'll put it on the tentative agenda um, for Diane to look at. And then when she sends it out before the meeting, Christine and I and you can talk and decide how insane this list is. I do um, want to say that I'm unbelievably impressed with our special educators right now. I mean, the, and our paraprofessionals, the amount of work that they're doing and the amount of connections that they've made with students has been phenomenal. And I know it's probably still not enough, but I mean, when you compare it to, um, from what I've heard, many other places in the state, it's just phenomenal, the work that they're doing. That's, that's fantastic to hear. Yeah. Um, yeah, and Katie's really been on top of, I mean, there's a big section in the continuity of plan around services and um, she's, we're in a lot of meetings like this, talking about all sorts of things, special ed related. So she is, she is on top of it and she's definitely leading the pack in a really great way. Um, and yeah, we are fantastic. what that looks like. So it'd be great to have her come. Yeah, yeah I think that would be good. Um, yeah, I've been really impressed too with interventionists. Um, you know, Silas has been working with Miss Jenny um, twice a week, basically for a month, like since the beginning. And um, it's been fantastic. Like, I think he's actually, his reading has improved over this last month, like leaps over yeah. from one traditional school. So I don't know why, but it's working. One-on-one <laughs> -on -one attention. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah, she's, yeah they, are, they are doing an incredible job. So. Okay. Um, well, I'm going to move uh, that we, or I would like somebody to move that we go into executive session for a quick executive session to talk um, numbers. Um, so, does anybody want to move that? So move. Okay. Seconded. Okay. okay. There were a lot of seconds. Diane, you can pick just about anybody. <laughs> okay. So, David, do you turn off the recording at this point? Hold on just a second. I want to, um, yeah, I think we're getting there. Diane, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, Diane. Have a good night. Yeah, you're off the hook now. 
Thank you. <laughs> Good to you, see you. Diane. Thank you, Diane. Hi, Diane. Do you know where it is to stop it? The recording.